Hi everybody, um, here is our lesson on conversion problems. So this technique is going to save you a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress later, especially in the course, but definitely right now as well. How to convert things using what's called dimensional analysis or factor labeling. You probably know if you've ever traveled that converting currency is a royal pain. Of course, their standards change daily. Luckily for us, they stay the same. So if we multiply a measurement by a conversion factor, um, what happens to the measurement? Well, a conversion factor is just a ratio, and every time you hear the word ratio, you need to think fraction um, that has equivalent measurements. So the book has a picture of one meter <clears throat> and a hundred centimeters, and they are all cutesy with you know, one is smaller than a hundred, meter is bigger than centimeters, so you see that. But just think about um, 12 inches per one foot, or one foot per 12 inches. They're what we call unitary rates. The numerator and the denominator are equivalent in size. And so if you divide them, they're equal, so they'd be one. That's where the term unitary rate comes from. So depending on what other um, <clears throat> classes you've had before, it might be called a conversion factor, it might be called dimensional analysis, it might be called using unitary rates. Um, it's all the same thing. <laughs> Notice that we've got a fraction set up, a ratio, and we have a horizontal fraction bar. One meter per 100 centimeters, or 100 centimeters per one meter. We could flip it either way. If you multiply a measurement by a conversion factor, the numbers will change. And for a metric system, it's just the decimal position usually. Um, but the actual dimensions of the object won't. The quantity measured stays the same. This is a micrograph, a really uh, like a microscope. Um, it's measuring really small stuff in nanometers. So nano means billion, <clears throat> billionth, excuse me, and so there's a billion nanometers in one meter. I could use that as my unitary rate if I was converting those. Depending on which way I'm going, I'm going to multiply by a billion or I'm going to divide by a billion. Obviously you know you're going to get really different results. So which one do you do? When do you divide? When do you multiply? Well, there's a nifty trick for it. Um, using dimensional analysis, you're going to be able to um, instantly know, before you ever touch your calculator, whether you need to multiply or divide. I'm going to say this over and over, so write this down. Ask for, over given. Ask for, over given. The units your answer is asking you to solve for need to go in the numerator of your conversion factor. The units that you've been given go in the denominator. Hopefully you can figure out a relationship. If I said to you 36 inches, you know instantly to divide by 12 if I ask for feet. Feet on top, you would put one foot, you would put 12 inches on the bottom, 36 divided by 12, or multiplied by 1 over 12, same thing, would be 3 feet, of course. Okay, So um, a silly example, something fun to try and figure out. How many seconds have you been alive? Um, obviously, <clears throat> most of us don't know how many um, minutes we've been alive or how many days we've been alive. Um, we just usually round it to years, right? Well, how many seconds in a year? I don't know. How many in a month? Well, that changes with each month, and I don't know it anyway for any of them. <laughs> how many in a week? I don't know. How many in a day? I don't know. In an hour? Well, I know how many there are in a minute. One minute is 60 seconds, or 60 seconds per one minute. Okay, how many minutes are there in different things? I don't know. Well, I know this one. One hour per 60 minutes or 60 minutes per one hour. And then of course, how many hours in a year, a month? I don't know any of those, but I do know how many in a day. How many days in a week? Well, seven. How many days in a month? That changes. 
how many days in a year? Well, that kind of changes too. Remember um, why we have leap years is because it takes just a little bit longer uh, than 365 Earth days to make our trip around the sun. So we're going to go with 365.25 days. Now that we have all that figured out, we can put in your number of years, 15, 16, 17, 18, whatever it is, <clears throat> and that's going to be our starting unit. So that's our given unit. So we want the conversion factor that has years on the bottom. Okay, I need to change years, excuse me, days into hours. So I need something with days on the bottom, because if I stopped here, I'd have years and hours on top. Same with our minutes. Same with our seconds. And I know I'm going fast. You can pause this and think about it. Years that you start with, cancel years on the bottom. Remember, the number you start with can be thought of as a fraction over one. Days cancel days, hours cancel hours, minutes cancel minutes, and you'll be left with seconds. No more years, you're all the way to seconds. So how do you calculate it? Super easy, especially for this one. You take the number of days in a year, times the number of hours in a day, times the number of minutes in an hour, times the number of seconds in a minute. And of course, multiply all that by the number of years, and you'll get how many seconds you've been alive. All right, here's an example. <clears throat> Lots of these problems in chemistry are word problems, your favorite kind in math. Um, and so you have to read it carefully. I'm going to go slowly with this. An experiment requires each student use an eight and a half centimeter length of magnesium ribbon, whatever the heck that is. Magnesium is a metal ribbon. Well, you kind of get the idea. It's flat, long, flat thing. <laughs> How many students can do the experiment if there's 570 centimeters of magnesium ribbon available? Well, I know two things. I know my asked for units, that's how many students, and I know my given units, that's how many centimeters. So 570 centimeters, how many students can I give eight and a half centimeters to? Since centimeters is what I'm given, I'm going to use the conversion factor that has centimeters on the bottom. Since students is what I'm asked to find, I'm going to use the one that has students on top. Multiply the numbers together, which in this case means divide. Okay, this is Centimeters on top, remember this could be over 1, divided by 8.5, and I'll get the number of students, which is 67. How many seconds are in a 40-hour work week? Well, after doing um, our first example, hopefully you can figure that out on your own. Pause and try it, and then come back. Hopefully you got that answered. All right, with the metric units, as I stated uh, last week or the week before, um, when we're converting metric uh, units, all we have to do is change the position of the decimal. So 750 um, <clears throat> decigrams is what we have. Remember, 10 decigrams is 1 gram. Remember, King Henry drinks buttermilk during cold mornings. The base unit is grams. We have decigrams. I want to change decigrams into grams. I need to multiply by something that has grams in the numerator, the thing I'm asked to find, decigrams on the denominator. So I want to divide by 10, which is, of course is the same thing as moving the decimal place over one place. Simple, 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 simple in the metric system. All right, here's some conversions that you need to do. Um, one thing I want to point out, cubic centimeters are equal to milliliters. It's a really cool thing in the metric system. We talked about it on uh, the notes uh, from 3.2. Um, a linear measurement, centimeters, 
can be converted into a liquid or a solid volume measurement. It's really, really nice. So centimeters cubed are the same as milliliters. So a thousand centimeters cubed is a thousand milliliters, which of course is one liter. So here's some other conversion factors that you should recognize from the prefixes. Um, the symbol for micro, because we can't use M, we use mu. This is a Greek letter, and it means millionth. So there are a million micrograms per one gram. Okay? We have start with grams. We need to have grams in the bottom, micrograms, the unit we want in the top. So pause these and give them a whirl. And hopefully these are the answers that you got. You can check yourself. All right, sometimes we have to convert between more than one um, unit. And so sometimes, just like when we were doing the, the how many seconds are you alive, um, I don't know how many centimeters are in a micrometer. I know how many centimeters are in a meter, and I know how many micrometers are in a meter. So I can set this up to help myself. <laughs> so centimeters is what I'm given. I want centimeters on the bottom. Remember, 10 to the second is 100. I want to get my answer in micrometers, so this has to be in the numerator. Okay, so, <laughs> so hopefully if you take 0 0.073, divide by 100, multiply by a million, hopefully it will be pretty easy for you. So this is kilometers. Again, I don't know how many decimeters are in a kilometer, but I know there's 1,000 meters in a kilometer, and I know there's 10 decimeters in a meter. Okay. So if I take this number and multiply by 1,000 and then by 10 again, I should get the correct answer. Sometimes it's a little more difficult. Sometimes you have to um, convert the numerator and the denominator. It's really kind of irritating. Um, it happens more in physics than it does in chemistry, but if you use dimensional analysis, you'll be able to do it too. So you already know density is mass per unit volume. So if I tell you manganese has a density of 7.21 grams per cubic centimeter, remember when you hear per, one is the number, how many kilograms per cubic meter is there? Oh my goodness. Well, to go from grams to kilograms, I know I have to divide by 1,000. And to go from centimeters cubed to meters cubed, ooh, this is a little trickier. So, um, you know one meter is 100 centimeters. And if it's cubed, that's 100 times 100 times 100, it's a million centimeters cubed. Holy cow. Okay. So when you're trying to convert these, you have to decide, am I going to multiply by a thousand or am I going to divide by a thousand? Hopefully you see the grams on top, cancels grams on the bottom, kilograms on top, that's where I need my answer. So this is the one. Again, centimeters cubed on the bottom, meters cubed on the top, that won't cancel. I need meters cubed on the bottom. So I'm going to set up my problem this way. Grams cancel grams, Centimeters cubed cancel centimeters cubed. Numerators cancel denominators for units as well. I'm left with kilograms and meters cubed, which is what I need in my answer. And so I'm going to, maybe some of you see this right away, 10 to the third, 10 to the sixth. Right? When you're dividing exponents, you subtract. So this is just 10 to the third. I would be able to report it as 7.21 times 10 to the third kilograms per cubic centimeter. All right, go slow, go back and take a peek at that. If it's too, if I went kind of fast, I was trying to make it short and sweet. You can pause it anywhere. Hope that helps. Give the worksheet a try.